Hello and welcome to another Origins of Expressions. Today we'll be going over the phrases March Madness, In Like a Lion, Out Like a Lamb, Beware of the Ides of March. What do they all have in common? They're all phrases and idioms around the month of March. So let's trek right to work and start this video. March brings with it the promise of gardening and warmer, sunny days as Earth turns its frostbitten cheek to winter and spring into a fresh start. In the early Roman calendar, March was the first month of the calendar year, as March brought the first days of spring with the vernal equinox. It was the start of new beginnings. However, in 450 BCE, January and February took their current place at the beginning of the year and pushed March to the third month. March has such an impact on the Northern Hemisphere that we celebrate it and, of course, come up with phrases and idioms around the month that brings a change of weather. Let's jump right in to our first phrase. March Madness March Madness refers to the college basketball tournament that is held in March and lasts till the beginning of April. It's March Madness, baby! The history of March Madness is a little older than the college basketball tournament, though. This saying starts out a bit different and not only has it changed its name over time, but also its meaning. March Madness was a term used since the early 1900s to refer to a, a form of madness or uncharacteristic behavior said to affect people in March. This expression started due to the crazy spring fever people would get. You know, that feeling of you just want to get out of the house after a long winter, but you just can't yet? That's March Madness. Even before we started to refer to people as having March Madness, it has been said that it started due to the way that hares would act in March. The saying might have started out as mad as a March hare due to the occurrence of the hares becoming very aggressive during the breeding season in March. It was then shortened to March Madness later on. Lewis Carroll takes a twist to the use of the bunny cliché with his characters the Mad Hatter and the March Hare. Both of them appear in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Today, we have changed the meaning of March Madness to refer to the NCAA basketball tournaments that start in March. This started back in 1939 when the high school athletics administrator and sports writer Henry Porter used the phrase in an article. March Madness was then used for the Illinois state basketball tournaments before spreading to the Midwest region. In 1980, March Madness was then used by the NCAA. This is now used to express the particularly wild and exciting games that can include some buzzer-beating, bracket-busting upsets. An example sentence would be, I can't wait to watch the March Madness games with my friends. Let's go ahead and let them watch their games while we move into our next phrase. In like a lion, out like a lamb. In like a lion, out like a lamb is used to describe the weather in March in the Northern Hemisphere, where it tends to be very harsh and unpleasant at the beginning of the month, then get milder and more palatable towards the end of the month. The earliest record of comes in like a lion, goes out like a lamb, was in 1732 by Thomas Fuller in the book Wise Sense and Witty Sayings. He writes about March coming in harsh and wintry, but ending warmer and more spring-like. This is how we still use the saying today. However, it is also said that it could have come about due to the stars. In like Leo, out like an Aries. The constellation Leo, the lion, rises in the east at the beginning of March, and thus the month comes in like a lion, while Aries, the ram, sets in the west at the end of the month, and hence the month will go out like a lamb. Today, we can still hear the saying be used the same way it's been used since 1732, the way traditionalists have used it since then, to express the wild weather of March. An example sentence is, I know, I know, in like a lion, out like a lamb, but spring can't come fast enough. Well, now that we've warmed up to that idiom, let's move into our last one of the video. 
Beware of the Ides of March. Beware of the Ides of March is a warning that something bad might happen on March 15th. Ooh, beware of the Ides of March. So, what are the Ides of March and why do we need to be aware of them? Well, the Ides is an old Roman name for a day used in their calendar system. They use different words to help them divide and arrange their calendars. Months of the Roman calendars were arranged around three name marker days. The Calends, the Nons, and the Ides. These were reference points for which the other unnamed days were calculated. Now we know what the Ides are. Why do we have to still be aware of the Ides of March? It comes from the historical fact that Julius Caesar was murdered by a group of Roman senators on the Ides of March in 44 BCE. Exactly a month earlier, Caesar had visited a soothsayer named Spurina, who predicted that his life would be in danger for the next 30 days. How do we know this? Because it was recorded by the Roman poet called Terence. Translated into English, it read, For Spurina began a soothsayer had warned Caesar before to be aware of the Ides of March, for he should be slain as that day, and soon he was. Um, creepy. In 1601, William Shakespeare used this information to write his play, Julius Caesar. He wrote, Beware of the Ides of March. What man is that? A soothsayer bids you beware the Ides of March. Today, we do not use the saying, beware of the Ides of March, unless we are seeing or acting in Shakespeare's play, Julius Caesar. But if we were to bring it back, here's an example. Our math teacher is in a bad mood today. He gave us four big homework assignments. Beware of the Ides of March. Well, looks like they have some homework to do. Let's let them get started as we move on. Ooh, fun fact. Do you know why we wear green for St. Patrick's Day? Well, a fun fact is that it used to be celebrated with blue. Sky blue to be exact. Early illustrations of St. Patrick show him wearing blue. And the official color of the Order of St. Patrick's, part of Ireland's valor, was a sky blue known as St. Patrick's blue. So, you might be asking, how did Ireland get so obsessed with green? One of the reasons green replaced blue was because of Ireland's nickname the Emerald Isles. The green stripe in the Irish flag also played a little bit of the role. Traditionally, the green stripe represents the Catholics of Ireland. The orange stripe represents the Protestants population in Ireland. And the white in the middle symbolizes the peace between the two religions. The religious symbolicism doesn't stop there. St. Patrick's Day started life as a religious holiday. You know, less beer, more prayer. St. Patrick's was instrumental to the early adoption of Christianity by the Irish people. Legend has it, he drove all the snakes out of Ireland, which kind of, you know, won over the locals. St. Patrick was a missionary for Christianity and is thought to have used green shamrocks to teach people about the Holy Trinity. You know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Another reason for greenifying everything. Okay. So now we know why green and the history. Why do we wear it? Leprechauns. Yep, it's all about the leprechauns. These mischievous little guys are said to pinch anyone not wearing their favorite color on St. Patrick's Day. And these Irishmen love the color green. I guess no one's filed a harassment claim on them yet. Huh. Now, to show that we are in the Irish spirit on St. Patrick's Day, we break out the green clothes and jewelry, wear shamrock-shaped pins and glasses, and dye our rivers, bagels, and beverages green. Well, I hope you have a good St. Patrick's Day this year, and don't forget a small touch of green. Well, that's the information that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed learning about where our idioms and our phrases come from. If you did, I would love to have you subscribe to the channel. It won't cause March Madness to set in if you subscribe. It's quick and easy, and I would really appreciate it. Oh yeah, quick question before you go. Do you know any idioms or phrases around the month of March? Maybe you know other idioms or phrases on an entirely different subject. I would love to see them. Leave them in the comments below. And you know if I use one of your phrases, I'll give you a shout out. Thank you again for watching and subscribing. I really appreciate your time. Until next time, bye.